343 is looking to create a campaign that we've never experienced before in the Halo franchise, and the recent Ask 343 development update goes into really great details about that. So in this video, we're gonna break that all down for you. So stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. So this is part two of the breakdown that we've had for the Ask 343 development update, which provide a lot of great information. If you missed my previous video talking about the no elites for multiplayer, no dual wielding, and also the campaign structure, which we'll touch on a little bit in this video as well, I highly suggest go check out that video. But in this video, we're gonna focus a lot on the world and environment of Zeta Halo. And why Halo Infinite's campaign is going to be something that's gonna be completely unique and something really special for us. So let's get right into the details here. So 343 was asked if Halo Infinite is an open world game or a semi open world game and they really skirted around this answer specifically. It seems like 343 as a whole has been really skirting around the open world answer to what how Halo Infinite's campaign structure is going to be. Uh, they've said open and expansive but they've also said it's not exactly open world. They do talk about mission structure though and how it does seem to be a linear format in a way where your next main section you'll go to but while you're in that main section going along the golden path as they refer to as you'll see various locations for side missions audio logs interesting locations that will kind of just make you kind of meander your way to where you need to go if you so choose so but of course you can just stick to the main golden path and you just play the halo campaign as you would traditionally interesting topic to talk here is also about wildlife within halo infinite as you guys remember within the announcement trailer we saw actually a big emphasis on wildlife within this environment that they're creating now a lot has changed since that 2018 announcement when it comes to halo infinite and the development as a whole though the question was asked how is wildlife going to play within halo infinite and this is what they had to say um we don't have any hostile uh, uh wildlife in the environment we wanted to focus the idea on the battle between the banished and the the unsc forces chief you know pushing back back against that so we didn't want to bring in the idea that you're you're fighting the the ambient population of the ring um but we do have them as an element that really brings the ring to life you know you got we, i think people have seen the space gophers so if you see birds like circling up in the air you might go oh, what's over there check that out and some of the uh wildlife that we have have like a bioluminescence kind of quality to them um and so uh in the night cycles you'll see some of those come out and be more prevalent which looks really cool uh in the darker spaces too so we won't be having any kind of gruta battles that we had like in halo reach or anything like that this seems to be more kind of like an environmental kind of immersion kind of thing that you will see within the world to make it seem more alive because you'll have live animals in it. I do love the fact he was talking about the circulating birds up in the air indicating that hey something's going on over there you might want to go check it out. That's so much more immersive and just natural way to indicate to players of a objective that's over there rather than saying like putting a waypoint on your screen saying walk to that circle. Personally, I'm a fan of not having to deal with wildlife. I like that it's there to help give the world some life to it. And also love how they utilize it as a player indicator to give a much more natural sense that this world is alive. This next section, they talk about the biomes that are going to be on Zeta Halo. For the most part, what we've seen is kind of like mountainous woodland areas, but they're going to be much different kind of stuff we can check out. In the previous development update, they talk about like marshy wetlands as well as something. They go into some details here, and this is what they had to say. Pacific Northwest is our main biome. Um, that was by choice. We got really excited about it. We wanted to do it right. And so within that biome, you actually find um, diversity within sub biomes. So we have some high altitude um, palettes. We have some more wetland palettes, more swampy wetlands. Um, we also have some war torn areas. Uh, we refer to those as the deadlands. Um, where you can really see some storytelling going on with the with the biome itself and maybe what happened on the ring. We actually have cave systems in the game as well, so you can go exploring in some really dark, kind of uh, moody areas and, and see what you can uh, discover. We have the Forerunner architecture. You go inside the Forerunner uh, with that classic palette, and then the Banished themselves bring this like plethora of really interesting... Um, architecture and buildings and fortifications and so when you we put all these things together it adds a lot of variety in a very natural way i mean here in the pacific northwest we have beaches we have mountains we have like open grasslands like farmland and stuff like that we have woodlands snowy regions and stuff like that so pretty much everything but deserts 
Though I wouldn't be surprised if 343 has a much more focused and targeted environmental experience with the launch of Halo Infinite and then with further on expansions, maybe have like the snowy region, the desert region, maybe the underwater region or something like that to kind of just get some more environments down the line because this is a 10 year plan, you need to kind of spice up the environments a little bit. And as someone who lives in the Pacific Northwest, it rains a lot here in Seattle. And this actually kind of feeds into the next part about talking about dynamic weather and how it sounds like we might not be getting rain or snow or anything like that. This is what they had to say. There's a really cool wind system, um, which is not just visual, but also audio. We have we have fog systems, you could call them, that come in to different um, altitudes and, and different times of day. We didn't go down the road of having rainstorms and thunderstorms and snowstorms and things like that um, for our launch this year. But uh, we're really excited about the future and what that might mean for things like that. So it sounds like, yeah, there might be like different kind of wind types, uh, probably different clouding effects and maybe something like that. But nothing really like rain, thunderstorms or snow or anything like that affecting your gameplay in any kind of capacity, at least for now at the launch. I think what 343 might be doing is saving these for maybe specific events like the ring had a snowstorm and everything's covered in snow or something like that. Or a new expansion brings in new kind of weather effects or something like that to kind of just spice it up to make it so then when these expansions and additions to Zeta Halo happen that they're exciting and make you want to jump in and play. So maybe the launch version of the game be kind of like vanilla, kind of standard and basic, nothing too crazy or exciting, but interesting enough to keep your attention. Talking about spicing up the environments, we have a day-night cycle within Halo Infinite, and there's some really cool things that they talked about within this development update, talking about how the time of day can actually affect how enemies will be around you in the world, and this is what they had to say. So when you're moving through the world in the, 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 the darker periods, um, you're gonna end up seeing more uh, patrols of phantoms, you know, um, moving through the space with searchlights and that kind of thing. Um, which is pretty cool. And it like adds kind of an eerie element to what's going on um, around you. Uh, you'll probably run into more opportunities where grunts are sleeping on the job, um, get the drop on some enemies that way. And then we've done some things to try to kind of emphasize, honestly, just like cool things that would look good in the dark spaces. So we're going with things that have like more emissives on them and that kind of thing. So you'll run into like shield jackals and that kind of thing, because when they put the shields on, um, it looks really cool, you know, in the dark. And it's, I mean, honestly, it's simply because it just looks really cool and it's really fun to fight those in that kind of environment. Um, we put more uh, coils in place and stuff like that because they glow and have really cool effects in the in the darker spaces. Um, enemies with uh, personal shields, that kind of stuff. I'm really glad that 343 took this amount of detail when it comes to playing at night compared compared to playing to the day time. So where you're playing at night, it has a different feel to it, different kind of experience rather than just being like the same thing, but with it being all blue instead. So glad 343 went this step forward. And continuing on with our time of day theme, we talked about the cutscenes, and as we do know that they're gonna be in-game, they're all kind of in one take kind of style. They're in-engine, and does that also mean that like when you're playing at night, are the cutscenes gonna be at night? And vice versa for daytime stuff. And yeah, it's in-game in real time. So the same cutscene can play during the day or it can play at night, which is actually really cool. I love the fact that they want to keep this in game. You know, having like these blur cutscenes that we've had previously do look amazing. They're fabulous and really awesome. But I honestly feel like they kind of take you out of the game, which is in some formats of the game work well, like a traditional campaign. But with uh, the openness and the continuity that Halo Infinite's campaign is going to have, you're going to want to match that with the cinematics. So no like blur cutscenes, but uh, we will have some amazing Night, live time of day cutscenes within Halo Infinite. Talking about lighting, a really cool thing that they talk about here is that the ring for Zeta Halo is 3D model. This is the first time you've ever had a 3D model Halo ring within a Halo game. Traditionally, it's just been part of the skybox was just like a, you know, a JPEG PNG file or whatever. First time we've ever had a 3D fully modeled out Halo ring, which is so cool to again give you a better sense of perspective. And what this does, it allows some really cool lighting effects like an eclipse. This is what they had to say. We chose to go with a 3D model mostly because the ring, again, in the blog, we described the ring as a character. Uh, you think of a 3D model in the sky and as you move across the world, you're gonna see it from different angles, right? Even though it's the same thing each time. And so we were able to kind of give different attributes to it in a 3D model versus if it were just a 2D in the sky um, painting, you don't really get that uh, that parallaxing play of shapes and, and kind of details. And so making it a 3D model 
allows us to do that. And it plays really well with our day-night cycle. So you see the day-night cycle, the light source sun rises and you can see the shadows on the ring kind of change based because it's a 3D model and it's actually casting shadow. At a certain time in the day, there's an eclipse. And so the, the ring actually eclipses the sun and you get this like midnight feel. It's, it's pretty brief, but it's really neat kind of moment um, while you're playing. And so having a 3D model allows us to do kind of really interesting things like that. that um, that's exciting to me. This is such a cool addition to Halo that I cannot wait to see what else they can pull off with having a fully modeled out Halo ring for different kind of lighting or different kind of just effects within the skybox and things like that. There's a lot of more than just you know, having a different time of day and eclipses happening. So we'll see what happens with 343 when it comes to that. And talking about enemies acting differently given the situation, this is probably one of the biggest changes within the format of a Halo campaign overall. And it's a question about dynamic enemies within the world. And this is what they had to say. We have a system in place to react to the some of the choices the player makes. So for instance, if you're moving through a space and you're on foot, um, we, we, will, we will understand that. And the random encounters you might run into are uh, encounters that would be fun to engage in on foot. And if you're like coming into a space and you've got a flying vehicle, for instance, and you're just cruising through, you might run into a, an encounter that's fun to fight against in a flying vehicle. Um, I wanna emphasize that the goal there is to make it so that it, we're giving you things that are fun to engage with, with whatever you're bringing to bear and the choices you've made. It's not sort of a, a reaction pushback, you know, oh, the player's in a flying vehicle, let's punish them. <laughs> it's not really that. It's the idea of like, what is really fun to do with, with this kind of a choice that the players made and we make sure that we're providing those kinds of opportunities so that uh, so that it feels really cool and it feels rewarding for the choices you've made. So much of this game is is anchored in the idea of player agency and choice. You know, play it the way you want to do it, figure out what you want to do, and 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 the game will support uh, reacting to those choices and, and presenting you with fun opportunity. So traditionally in Halo, we've had like the Warthog section, the tank section, the aerial Hornet section, and stuff like that. They're specifically designed for these vehicles and interactions. In Halo Infinite, it's going to be a dynamic element. So if you're rolling in with a Scorpion, you'll come across more anti-scorpion or more interactions that would be fitting a scorpion more if you're going on foot the same situation can play out completely different or if you're in the air the same area can play out completely different as well this is a huge and drastic change from our traditional halo campaign experience so no one's campaign is going to play the same as someone else's which is just so crazy to think about i absolutely love this idea that would really create so much more diversity and so many more new and unique tactics you can utilize while playing the campaign and give so much more replayability. And if you want to talk about replayability, well, check out the videos on the screen right here. I got a link to all my news and informational videos right there. If you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.